Hello my friends, welcome to Knowledge India. In this video, we are going to talk about five tips which you can follow to change your job with AWS certification. So before we get started, if you are not familiar with our channel Knowledge India, I request you to go ahead and take a look at it. Look at 100 plus videos which are there on our channel related to AWS and if you like it, you can subscribe and watch our videos. What is the reason for this particular video? I've got a lot of queries where people have been asking that I have completed AWS certification, but I'm not able to change my job. I'm not able to get a relevant job in the AWS field. What should we do to, you know, to go ahead and change our career with AWS? So in this video, I will give you all those steps which you can follow and make it work. Number one, doing the right certification. As all of you know, there are so many AWS certifications out there. And as you might guess, maximum people go ahead and do Solution Architect Associate. Is that the right thing to do always? Probably no. Okay. Please understand that when you get into a job, you are not just taken with your, you know, for your AWS knowledge alone. You have to go and perform a particular type of function there. Hence, it becomes very important that depending on the skill set which you have or, and the type of experience which you have already, you choose the correct certification. It would not make any sense that somebody who is, you know, with very less number of years of experience, uh, just a solution architect, because the guy would not be actually doing the solution architecting in the organization right because uh, the person has to learn a lot of things related to applications related to infrastructure and though he can just go ahead and learn aws concepts which are covered in solution architect track but as such in order to design a complete solution and you know uh, to understand the different details which uh, you know where your solution interacts with so many other things the guy might not be ready at that time so uh, you have to try and see that that uh, that you choose the right certification uh, if you are a developer who is who is just doing programming for the past few years go for the developer track if you are an administrator uh, who has been managing uh, you know different uh, uh, windows admin or uh, linux admin you can go ahead and choose the sysops administrator if you have a decent years of experience now there is no hard and fast rule of course but at least you understand different aspects of a solution design you have done some solution design already then it would make sense that you go ahead and do solution architect track i have a detailed video which you can go and uh, see that how to move forward and how to choose a particular certification see that and choose the correct certification it is important that you start at the associate level uh, depending on your current competency and then you progress further into that i have seen that many people just get into collecting certificates uh, so they will do one after another all the three associates and then they will say now i'll go for professional no it's not necessary you can go ahead and do let's say sysops administrator associate and then you can do the professional one of that which would be devops pro so try and increase in that manner that would give you more visibility so do an associate and then move on to professional or move on to uh, specialty certifications number two skills other than aws understand that in the market you will not be just taken to talk about AWS alone and not knowing anything else. So it becomes very important that you have other IT related skills as well. A bit of that for sure. For example, you should understand basics of OS administration. You should, under, you should understand what is meant by patching, what are path cycles, you know, what are licensing policies, how does a vendor, uh, you know, support different, different licensing models. Uh, you should have some understanding of databases. How do they work? Uh, you, how does backup work? You know, in the traditional format, how does different type of backup backup tools work? You should have an understanding of networking. You should know that when an application gets developed, 
what is meant by different tiers of the application and things like that. So you should have all those knowledge, a bit of understanding of all those things as well. You need to go and read all that stuff as well along with AWS and that makes you a professional who can be actually employed. Right. Uh, in addition to that, it is always good to have some amount of programming knowledge. I'm not asking you to become a very fundu programmer. No, but you should know some programming with which you can go ahead and automate certain tasks. So you can go ahead and just learn PowerShell. You can learn some amount of Python or just do some shell programming, but learn some programming skills so that you can go ahead and you know maybe call APIs, write loops and do stuff. Just learn that much for sure. Number three, deep technical knowledge or details on AWS. Now what happens normally is uh, people in hurry to complete the certification, they just go ahead and uh, uh, try and follow some course which tells them or teaches them exactly what is required to pass the certification. So all on, on all the different topics, they just remain very high level. Uh, they learn the concepts, they learn the terminology, but they do not get into the finest details because of which what happens is, uh, they miss on those critical things which are written only in AWS documentation and not at other places. So it's very important that you do read AWS documentation for the services which you know or which you have practiced or which you are practicing. Because I, I, I mean, I understand that it's, it's very big, right? It takes time, but then it is maintained very well. And... Uh, it is easy to understand most of the times. Uh, you know, documentation is well supported with diagrams. It is properly linked. One page is linked to the other page in a, in a very good manner. But only if you go and read the documentation, you would be able to get the finest details. You'll be able to understand what are limitations, what is not possible with a particular service or feature. In addition to that, it becomes also very important that you are following AWS blog to know the changes which are happening, um, you know, with AWS services because it doesn't remain concept, co constant. You talk about one feature today and within a few weeks, they would have changed the feature or functionality. So please subscribe to the blog and remain updated, okay? You will have to read regularly, make it a habit, install some uh, tool like Feedly on your mobile, for example, and subscribe to this so that you get to know every day what is changing. Uh, I can I can just give you a few uh, you know some related tips here. Whenever you are seeing that a particular feature is working in this way on AWS, try to reason, try to think that why this re why this particular feature has been implemented in this way. What would be the case if it if it works in some other way? Try to visualize that a, a bit. That will give you a very good understanding and realization of that concept basically. Um, if you if you ever see that there are two concepts which look very similar to you, your mind might start thinking that okay, this these two things are very uh, similar. Why have they done it? Uh, you know, like why have they made a repetition? If you are thinking that way, it's quite uh, possible that you are missing on some finest details. Of course, the engineering team which makes different services. Uh, they they try and make sure that no repetition happens. Sometimes it happens that yes, one thing will replace something else. That type of scenario would be there. But if you are thinking that two things are exactly similar and you are not able to figure out that why why both of them exist, then surely you are missing on some critical detail. Go ahead and read in more depth and find it out. That's very important. That will help you. Moving on to next is your resume, of course, and the work which is mentioned there. Now, what happens is people just clutter their resume with unnecessary things and they do not understand that what should be shown, what people are really interested in when they are looking at your resume. So you have to understand that when you are applying for a job, your resume should kind of match and reflect uh, the same type of activities, right? Uh, which actually are required in the job description. So your resume should be saying that you have done kind of those things in the past, which are actually required for the job which you are applying. Now, uh, how you know how how do you go how do you go ahead and make a resume like that? People ask me this question that 
uh, how can I how can I put stuff in the resume? How can I talk about AWS project in my resume? So there are two things for it, right? I mean, you would be lucky if your current organization gives you a chance to work on some AWS project. You can really go ahead and mention about it uh, in your resume. But in case uh, your organization is not giving you that chance, and of course that's why you are changing your job, right? You want to change your job. You want to get into a better job. So what you can do is you can go ahead and pick up the white papers and solution designs which are there on AWS website, read them thoroughly, and then try to put a similar type of stuff. Do not copy paste, guys. Try to put a similar type of solution or a project saying that you worked on it in your resume, right? Now, is it faking? To a certain extent, yes, but then what I'm also saying is that just do not put it in your resume. Make sure that whatever you are putting there, though your organization did not give you a chance to work on it, but you have gone ahead and actually implemented it on your own in your AWS account. So go ahead and do that practice. And when you have done that practice, you would be confident that you will be able to answer all those small questions related to that design when the interviewer asks you. That's very very important right so uh, in summary you can mix uh, sometimes uh, your self learning work along you know with the work which is shown on your resume so you might have learned certain services very well so you can go ahead and you know mix it in the project which you have done or which you are showing on the resume so Make a good resume where you are just not mentioning that I know EC2, RDS, S3, and you know five services. You are not just naming that. Rather, you are telling that what business problem was there and how did you work in that project uh, to solve it. And there you can mention that what all different AWS services you used, what all did you work on. So that type of thing you will have to write. How to get it? I told you. Look at the white papers, look at the solution designs, architecture from different organizations, which is already there on the AWS website. Tweak it a bit. All right. The last and fifth and the most important one, of course. You know, though it is at last, it is the most important. Trust me. Communication and collaboration skills. I cannot stress enough how much important is this particular aspect, guys. Uh, so while you go for your interview, uh, make sure that you arrive on time, you are relaxed, wearing something comfortable, uh, right? Uh, while you are talking to, your, to the interviewer, make sure that you are talking with confidence. You are looking into his eyes while he is speaking or while you are replying, not that you are just seeing somewhere else. Uh, keep a smile on your face while talking, right? Show, show your gestures as if you are listening to him. I mean, you should be listening to him and you, you can show it with your hand gestures as well to a certain extent while you are uh, explaining or answering. Uh, listen carefully to what uh, interviewer, uh, interviewer is asking. Let him complete always. Don't be in a rush to start your reply. Uh, listen carefully if you want. Take a few seconds and then go ahead and reply. Okay? It is very important that you create an image in front of interviewer that you are not only technically sound, you also have a great flavor for people. That you are you are a person who can work with team, who can work with team, who can uh, you know collaborate with people around, try and get things done. Trust me, that's what people want. I mean, if you do not know a technical skill today. It is perfectly possible. Managers understand. You can go ahead and learn it. It all just takes, you know, some time and reading. You will learn that. But if you have not built uh, this, you know, working in the team spirit yet, if you do not have that skill set that you can explain your problem and get solution from someone or understand somebody's problem and uh, you know provide him a solution, then that is something which cannot be built in you, right? So that's where it becomes very important. So take care of these tips while you are uh, attending the interview. Create a good image. Try and have some examples already um, in your mind, right? Where you can explain that how did you actually solve certain 
people related problem right uh, in your previous uh, projects or in your previous organization uh, of course related to technical you would have answered but with this you would be able to create an image that how good you are in terms of talking to people collaborating with them and getting things done so that's very very important so i hope uh, that these tips uh, would help you try to think about it coolly and see which of these things you are not doing try to go ahead and make sure that make yourself better on that uh, keep practicing keep learning and if you find this particular video and advice helpful go ahead and share it with your friends uh, and you can help them as well if you have not looked at our channel already go ahead and look at our channel youtube.com slash knowledge india where you can find 100 plus videos on aws to learn free of cost thank you guys see you bye bye